I'm going to show you the main three meta comps right now at the higher end of the ranked ladder in Overwatch 2 on launch week. Now, this is going to be a little teeny bit different than Overwatch League comps because Overwatch League comps don't pass over to the ladder because a lot of times it requires the same five people to play eight hours a day together and have that level of coordination and higher skill level. Uh, so ladder is always a little bit different. There's some things you just can't quite pull off with five random players as opposed to five players who've played like 700 hours together as a team. Now this ladder is going to be from the perspective of say diamond through top 500 and most of these comps are really most viable in those settings. When you get to lower ranks comps don't matter quite as much. If you're five stacking you can use these as a point of reference and it could help you potentially especially if you play enough together but it's definitely in mind for a higher end play because there's certain expectations from each of the players once you get to a higher level that make some of these comps a little more viable and as you can see from the board i made here i'm also going to include the best alternate picks which there's usually a lot of in overwatch 2 and then viable alternate alternate picks which are like if you're on the ladder you can play it and it's not going to make you lose no matter what it's just it's not as good as some of the best alter alternate picks or some or the main comp that we see the most often with this and the last thing here is uh credentials so like i'm a top 500 support player i've played since season one and i've been watching uh streams of top 500 players as well as far and experiencing it myself so that's kind of the perspective i'm coming from now this might not be 100 percent accurate because these things are developing day over day we're only like four days since launch or something like that so it's still developing, but this is going to give you a good guideline of roughly what's going on with the meta comps right this second in Overwatch 2. All right, so let's get right into it. Poke Comp. All right, Poke Comp is going to be right now an Ana and a Zen as your support lineup. And for obvious reasons, Zen can Discord and poke them really hard. Zen can poke anyone out, and the Discord helps the rest of your team poke them out. And then Anna can heal people just from anywhere and can defend herself really well and has high healing. I mean, she's just a really strong, almost S tier pick in general. So a lot of comps are built off of her right this second. We'll see when Kiriko comes out if that changes. It may change some of the comps and the metas, and we'll see. I'll have to make another video then. But uh, right now, it's Anna's kind of really strong, strong support. So it's, a lot of things are built off of her. But you can't go away from Anna. I've seen it in Overwatch League a little bit here and there, but most time it's just Anna. All right. So then the other thing that you're going to want in a poke comp is Sojourn. Sojourn's S tier OP right now, totally broken because she can one tap at any range. There's no fall off as far as I'm aware on her charge rifle. And uh, she's just completely broken. You see her all the time in Overwatch League. You see her all the time in Ladder. Uh, it's basically Widowmaker without a charge up time and without a zoom in. Although there is a little nuance because you have to shoot in order to charge it, but you know. It's, it's totally overpowered. Uh, Soldier is probably one of the most common things I'll see. And we'll have to get to alternate picks because on ladder, you don't see the same five every single game. Like there's like general generalness like of I will often see this. So Soldier is like the most common one that I see uh, in this poke comp. It's either Sojourn and Soldier or Soldier and something else or Soldier and something else. And then every now and then just because it's ladder, you'll see random mixes of things. But uh, and then the best it's like Oh man, I, so I most often in the higher end, I'll see Sigma, but I also see D.Va. So take it with a grain of salt. It's not like, it's not guaranteed that it's just Sigma. It could be D.Va, it could be Sigma, uh, but let's go with Sigma for this one. And D.Va is going to be like the alternate pick. I, I, I don't know if visually if I should just leave her there or not. So hopefully you don't, if you skip ahead, you're not just confused why it's one, not the other. So yeah, that's uh, kind of the core most common comp of like the best characters for this setup uh and then we got the alternate picks because this is for you know competitive play this isn't overwatch league this is and even in overwatch league they swap about based on the map they'll swap it out based on a lot of different factors what is the enemy team playing and they'll you know they'll make little counter picks and things so uh this is by far not guaranteed that you play the exact 500 all circumstances but this is like the most commonality biggest commonality of what we'll see all right so uh, alternate picks for a poke comp, uh, Sombra's a good one, even though she's, like, in ladder, a lot of Sombras don't get the value they're supposed to get, but at the highest level they can, so it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, in theory, on paper, she's a good alternate pick, though, because when, uh, she can just kind of appear in the back line, and there's a Discord on someone, and she hacks them plus Discord, and it's so easy to kill them, so she combos with the Zen, so that's kind of why she's a reasonable alternate pick if you can actually play her good. 
which on ladder I see a lot of Sombers who are not good, but they're playing her because it's meta in Overwatch League to have her like that. Uh, but you need to actually be good at this. She actually takes a lot of skill and practice now, so be aware of that. Uh, and then Moira is actually a surprising alternate pick. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how much you'd see her in Overwatch League. I think I saw her a couple times. But in ladder, it's a lot more viable because things can be played a lot more loose. There's a lot more openings and options and stuff in a ladder setting, a pickup game setting. Uh, so Moira would be replacing the Ana in theory in a comp like this because uh, you still need the Zen for a poke. But she can throw the Discord Orb, which is a good poke. She can just stay alive and kind of go anywhere and just be uh, stable. She's just a stable main heal output. It's not as good as an Ana generally. And on some maps, it's absolutely terrible. But on some maps, it's really, really good. Just as good as the Ana, like King's Row, for example, because of different bounce angles and things like that. But uh, she's a reasonable alternate pick, depending on the map and the setup and what's, what's going on in the match. Uh, Kiriko, I'm going to assume is an alternate pick. Uh, maybe for the Ana. Maybe for the Zen. I don't know. It's just because Kiriko is going to be OP, so she's always going to be an alternate pick. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, and don't quote me on that, because maybe she comes out, and it turns out she's like actual garbage F tier, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, I saw a lot of Overwatch League pros in random games in people's streams, and they were doing unranked, and they were just annihilating people with two tap headshots, basically. So uh, she's pretty strong, so she's just going to fit anywhere, basically. All right, so Hanzo, definitely an alternate pick, and you can replace either the Sojourn or the Soldier with a Hanzo, especially if you don't have, like, if you have a player, what do you play? I don't play Soldier, I don't play Sojourn, I play Hanzo. You're like, oh, that's fine, play, you know, play Hanzo, that's good, that'll work. I mean, it's, it, I don't even hardly explain, I mean, poke comp, you, you can poke him down, and it's good. Storm Arrows is really good with Discord, so. Uh, Widow. Widow is also one of the best alternate picks, but you have to keep in mind with Widow, it's map dependent. If you are playing inside of a box, it's going to be way less valuable than if you're playing on first point Junker Town or some giant sightline map where there's huge distances to look down. Uh, in those situations, Widow's great, and you could replace her in these. And I even saw her in Overwatch League comp a few times, so you know you, you can do it. It's totally fine. And then we have Hammond as an alternate pick. So in a poke comp, you would basically be giving up the protect ability. So like... Diva and Sigma, they have the power to uh, protect your teammates a little bit, but also to be aggressive and poke. Whereas Hammond, his only way to protect the teammates is a pile drive, which doesn't really protect them. And other than that, and knocking people around, but main thing is he's just going to help poke harder. Zen discords, Hammond goes flying in and starts shooting them while someone else is poking them, or he'll distract them while Soldier and Sojourn are shooting at them, and they don't realize they're being shot at because Hammond has their attention, so he's viable. You know, if you're a Hammond player, you're, you're in a good place in this comp. You can survive. It'll, it, it can work. Uh, Zarya is just strong right now. It's a, you know, a little map dependent for Zarya because she has no verticality, no movement, but uh, generally speaking, if you are a Zarya player, you don't play Sigma Diva, and your team's going poke, you can play Zarya, and you'll probably be fine. The bubbles are, you know, you have some good defensive capabilities with the bubbles if your teammates are in trouble. Uh, you have a lot of damage. Grav is a great setup for them. If you grab and you have a Sojourn and a Soldier, unless they have Trans or Beat, they're totally just dead, no matter what. So, uh, Zarya's just in a good spot. She's viable a lot of the time. Uh, McCree, for obvious reasons, he can just poke. He can just left-click them, and if they get close, he can sticky bomb them right-click. I mean, he's just, he's just a reasonable alternative. If you're a McCree player... You know, it'll work. You don't have to have Soldier Sojourn on ladder. Uh, he's not as good as them, but it's not like he's terrible. He's he's McCree. No, he's Cassidy now. Sorry. Cassidy. I forgot they changed the name. All right. So, BAP. BAP's also an alternative. You swap him out with Anna if you want. If you're a BAP player, you don't play Anna. Another guy only plays Zen. Uh, yeah, you play BAP. It's fine. Like, you know, it's not like you're no matter going to lose. You can win. Uh, he has good poke with his left click. Uh, his heals are still good. His immortality field can save you, especially when they rush you. Gives you just a moment to hopefully burn one down before you're dead. Uh, there's just a lot of options with him. All right, so we have Ash. Obvious reason. She can poke with their zoomed-in left click or just left click in general. Uh, Bob is a nice alt in general for almost any situation. And Bob can create a scenario where you throw it in a place and it forces them out into the open where you can poke them. So there's a lot of tactical play with Ash using Bob and other than that it's just she's a good poke character so yeah that works and then we have Orissa who can poke pretty well even though her bullet travel time is really slow 
but she's also just really strong right now. She can distract them. She can get their attention. She can just create a lot of chaos, which then opens up a lot of opportunities for your poke characters like Soldier and Soldier Zen to hit them if she rushes in and then uses her alt and they're trying to get out. They're so focused on that. They're not realizing they're getting poked and they just get poked out by your, your DPS and your Zen and even your Ana potentially. So uh, definitely a viable alternative. You play Orisa and it, it, you can do it. Like you don't, you don't have to play these things. It's not a guaranteed win because you have Sigma, Diva or something like if you're good at Orisa, or depending on the map too, there's a lot of variables now. You, you can just win. All right, so viable alternative or alternate picks. So we're going to throw Junkrat on here uh, for obvious, maybe not obvious reasons. I mean, he can poke them, right? You just spam grenades, you spam them out. And uh, if you hit them enough times, they're just dead. I mean, he, he pokes, but he's not as precise as the other poke characters is the main reason. He's not like the best pick in the world. But if you're a Junkrat player... Or if you're if you have a junkrat player on your team, just know it's not a guaranteed loss in this comp. Like it, it, it you can just win if he's good. It's fine. Like it's not a big deal on ladder. Uh, Overwatch League maybe a different story, but in top 100 games, like maybe different. But you know you're playing like Masters or GM or what. It's like you can win. It's not a big deal. Uh, and then Reinhardt is a viable alternate pick, even though he has almost no poke. I mean he has two fire strikes now. But it's just that he's stable. He has a shield for your poke people to hide behind. You know, it's like they can work with him. You can work with your Rhine and make it work, and it's not going to be bad. It's just, you know, there's other options that are a little bit smoother at high end. At low end, Rhine might actually be better because it gives you a stable place to just stand behind and shoot, and the game plays a lot slower the lower you go in rank. So he actually might go up here or at least here once you get to, like, platinum and below. So keep that in mind if you're watching this and you're a little bit lower rank. You can definitely think about that. Um, Hog is a viable alternate pick, uh, just because Hog's, like, just, just because, I mean, it's not like he's bad, it's not like he's great, but he can poke them, he can hook them, if he hooks them when you have these characters, they die no matter what, even the tank, like, they're almost no matter what dead if your team's paying attention, uh, but he doesn't give, has, has almost no defensive capabilities other than whole Hog, if you know what I mean, uh, but it's like, if you have someone playing Hog, and you're playing poke comp, you know, you can win. It's just, you know, you know, a little bit less likely to win. It just depends on who's good, who's bad. Also keep in mind, at lower ranks, Hog might be best or might be at least best alternate pick because at lower ranks, Hog just farms people real hard. So if you're good at Hog at Platinum and below, you know, it, it can work. It, it's it's fine. Uh, Junker Queen's an alternate pick on ladder because uh, she can't really poke too hard, but she can get in there and get her hands dirty and do stuff. She can disrupt them, get their attention while other people poke them. So, like... It's not the end of the world if you have Junker Queen. You can still win. Uh, it's just, again, not as good as other picks, but it's fine. Uh, Genji is a viable alternate pick in poke comp. It's like on the border of being an actual best alternate pick just because Genji's OP as hell. Uh, honestly, I probably should just put him in best alternate pick now that I'm really thinking about it, though, because he does have poke and he does have things. He just It just fits a little weird in a poke comp, but yeah, he's actually fine in a poke comp. I should, I should have had him up in there. Um, yeah, he's fine. So... If you play Genji, Genji's in a good spot. You can play him in almost anything and get value. If you have Genji instead of one of these, you'll survive. It's fine. He'll do fine if he's good. If he's good. He words. If he's good. Uh, Tor's Vile Alternate Pick. He can poke. So he's good. Uh, that's really about it, though. He's not super good right now. But he's never really been... Never, there, have, there has been a point where there's a Tor meta back in the day. Like, I don't know, two years ago or something like that. I don't remember. But uh, he's just not super insanely good right now, especially in a 5v5 setting. His alt was more meant to be tank burn and stop people from locking down positions, so it's not as great. But he's fine. If you have Torb, you're not going to lose no matter what. You'll be okay. Uh, Tracer in a poke comp's a little weird because uh, it gives you less stability and, and um, I don't know what to call it, like cohesiveness as a unit. Uh, it's like you're down a person, but at the same time, Tracer's in a good spot. She's a good character right now. She's pretty strong if they're good at it. She can cause distractions, which makes it a little bit easier to poke. So you can totally win, and it's fine with a Tracer. Uh, and then another viable one is Echo. Uh, again, she can poke. She can get around. It's kind of the same thing as Tracer. So, you know, it doesn't have the same cohesiveness as some of the other stuff. But, you know, it, you'll survive. It, it won't be the end of the world. Uh, Reaper also is in a position where he uh, doesn't really fit in this comp. But he's not going to lose your game, basically. So, you know, it's you'll survive. And then Winston's kind of in the same place where he doesn't fit in this comp at all, but it's not you're not going to lose no matter what. Like, you, you can win. Uh, and then Farah actually is probably in these best alternate picks, but it's just so map-dependent. Keep that in mind with Farah. It's very map-dependent. But she can definitely poke and, and catch him off guard and stuff. 
and that's kind of where we're at. These ones like don't fit in almost at all. Bastion's just kind of in a bad spot because hitbox is too big. Brig just is a weird one for this unless you're going to go... Well, there's a different comp we'll get to in a minute with Brig, uh, but she doesn't really fit in this. Doom doesn't really fit in very well at all in this. Lucio doesn't really fit in in this comp. Neither is May, Mercy, or Sim. Uh, but if they were going to be here, to obviously be in the bottom row. It's like... And you're not going to... I want to make sure, you know, you're not going to lose no matter what because you have someone playing one of these when everyone else is playing this type of comp. Uh, it's just that it's going to be a tougher game. And just keep that in mind. That's really... I mean, you can win with almost anything. You could just throw in the most random composition of characters on the ladder, and you could still win. That's just ladder play. So do keep that in mind. All right, I know it's going to be kind of a long video, but we're going to really educate you here on, on meta comps right now. So this is the poke comp. This is your final look at it. And then we're going to move on to rush comp, which is the other core one. And then there's another comp after that, which is... I call it the surround and harass comp. And those are like the three main comps. So we're going we're gonna to take a look at the rush comp now. All right, so rush comp. And you understand what this is if you're not familiar. Rush comp is where you almost always have a Lucio. And you kind of play back and wait for them to kind of come towards you some. And then you speed boost and you just run on them and just run them over. Or you, someone gets a pick and it's 5v4 and you immediately speed boost and run at them and just run them over. That's kind of the uh, uh, basis for a rush comp. And the rush comp is built, generally speaking, built off of an Ana and a Lucio. And this may change when Kiriko comes out, but right now it's Ana, Lucio. And again, like I said last one, almost all these comps right now are built off of Ana because Ana's pretty nuts in a 5v5 with only one tank. Uh, she's got a lot of options. And then Lucio's obvious speed boost. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. That's the number one thing. And he's, you know, got sound barrier and all the stuff he's, he's good so it's just but he fits really well in this comp this is like you know built around him and and the Anna so in the rush comp this is where Genji's S tier Genji's absolute S tier in a rush comp holy cow does Genji get value in S in a rush comp he actually gets equal to or greater than value as the sojourn even though Sojourn's totally OP, even more OP than Genji, Genji is equal to or greater than her in value in a rush comp because he can dash, kill, reset. And so when you're, rush, you're running in, you get someone low, Genji gash, dashes at them, it kills him, it resets his dash, you get someone else low, Genji dashes at them, turns right clicks, they're dead. He, he can help secure all those kills when you rush in. And he just has blade and you have nano blade then and just it's a really strong thing. So then D.Va is generally going to be your most powerful character to run with this at a higher level. And again, this is all higher level, like Diamond and up through top 500. Uh, at lower level, you know, that's where you start looking at alternate picks and just doing kind of whatever you want. and depends on who's good at what. But uh, at the theoretical on paper, D.Va is probably the strongest one. But it's not like by much. You can swap her out with a lot of other things like and, and you'll get by now. This is one of the scenarios with Rush Comp where Winston is suddenly a best alternate pick instead of a viable alternate pick because he can actually uh, get in there and do consistent damage and rush them. And especially with Primal Rage, he can just throw them around while you're rushing them and they're just in chaos and it, it's not bad at all. Uh, and then Soldier is fine as an alternate pick. Consistent damage, he can sprint in with everyone. Heal Station actually can kind of help in this scenario when you run in and then are on someone. You throw Heal Station down as well, and it just gives you a little bit more umph to where you're holding and pushing through. Uh, if you got stuck like in a doorway or something. And then Sigma, he's fine because he's just really strong and OP right now. So, you know, and speed, even though he doesn't have movement, the speed boost will take care of that for him to help him get in there fast. And then Ash is fine. She just has consistent damage. Uh, she can throw Bob in when you rush. Uh, she doesn't fit super well, but she's just so decent 5v5 that, you know, it's fine. If someone's playing Ash, that's fine. You'll do fine. She can also just spam left click if she needed to, if she has enough ammo in her coach gun. But uh, Tracer, insanely good for this. Uh, she can just, you know, you know how Tracer is. You rush in and she's blinking all around and finishing the kills and securing the kills. Or throwing a pulse bomb on someone when you CC them or something during the rush. So uh, that's fine. And then Roadhog is probably fine because he can get in there and just spam them and hook them and whole hog and just cause chaos. Uh, maybe not the best pick, but you'll. it's not like you're going to lose because you have him. Ryan's also good. He can get in there swinging when you rush in speed boost plus Ryan. If you're familiar with Overwatch, you know that's that can be deadly in certain scenarios. And then I think... Zen is not really uh, so good here because you really need these two. Uh, we'll get to him in a minute. Uh, Bap 
is an alternative. Yeah, Bap can replace the Ana if you need to, if you don't have an Ana player. Or if you just have a really good Bat player, that's fine. Uh, Cassidy's fine. He can fan the hammer. He can left click. He can throw sticky. He can high noon while everyone's distracted from the rest of the people rushing him. He'll be fine. Zarya is also great. You know, just run in. Bubble people on your team when they're low. Bubble them so they can't stop you from rushing in. Uh, grab when you rush in. Uh, like, you rush in, they all get chaotic, and then you're able to get two people in a grab. They're dead no matter what. Now the fight's won no matter what. Uh, and she just does a, a ton of damage. Hanzo's fine. He's getting in and spam storm arrows and, you know, are shooting people while they're all stuck in the chaos of these people, just running them over. Uh, not the greatest alternative, but he would be fine. You're not going to lose because of it. Uh, I'm going to put Kiriko in best alternate pick. I, I don't know exactly how it's going to go. If she, I guess she replaces the Ana. I mean, you can kind of replace the Lucio, but then it's only when she has her alt can you speed boost, which is not nearly as good. It's barely a rush comp then. But again, she's just gonna she's probably gonna be OP, so we're just gonna put her in there, but don't quote me on that. We'll have to see how that how she fits in here once she's on ladder play instead of unranked. And then Moira as an alternate pick, replace the Anna with a Moira, you'll survive. Uh, you gotta watch out if they have an Anna and they hit anti-nades, that's gonna be tough. Uh, and if you don't hit anti-nades, uh, you know, that's gonna make it rough. But Moira's in a good spot. She's just really strong right now, surprisingly in 5v5. It's a little map dependent, but you know, if you have a Moira and it's you know, especially if it's a map that's good for her. You can definitely win. It's not going to stop you from uh, winning. And then Hammond is a good alternate pick. You'll survive with Hammond. Uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. You rush in and he pile drives and is running around with you causing chaos. Uh, Sombra is actually good at the rush comp because just EMP alone. Right when you rush in, she EMPs. Now you all do bonus damage to them and it does some raw damage to start the fight. Uh, that's pretty powerful just to time with the rush. Uh, and if she just rushes in and uses her SMG, she'll be doing decent damage with everyone and, you know, helping out. Arissa can also, because of the speed boost, Arissa doesn't really have a whole lot of... I mean, she has a little bit of mobility now, I think, with her thing. Doesn't the twirl thing? I, I don't I don't remember, actually. But either way, Lucio, if not, Lucio takes care of her with the speed boost. And Arissa's pretty strong. She'll get to do a bunch of damage and then use her alt if you catch them off guard and kill three people or something. So that's pretty good. Junker Queen, you could do it if the person knows how to play Junker Queen and stuff. Uh, Junker Queen can get value. She, her alt was really good when you rush in and just, you know, uh, anti-nate a bunch of people, basically, and just get in there and just cause chaos. She'll be fine if in a rush cop setting. You won't lose no matter what, but if really does the person have experience on her because she's a new hero, so, you know. But you're not going to lose no matter what, in my opinion. Some people might put her here, though. She's not super insane for this, maybe. Uh, anyway, Reaper guy, yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, you definitely at low rank. At low rank, you'll farm them with Reaper guy. <laughs> so Reaper, uh, Death Blossom's insane in a rush. His shotguns are insane with speed boost because you get point blank. Then you can just, if you tap him in the head with a shotgun shot, they basically one tap. So uh, he's pretty good, but he's got to get real close to do that. But that's what the Lucio is for. So there's the rush comp's got a lot of options, as you can see. There's a lot of alternates here that you can go with. Uh, and then for the viable alternate picks, probably Echo. It's fine. Like, she'll find a way to make it work. Torb's fine. You can get in there and, you know, shotgun, right click, or secondary fire, I mean. Junkrat, for obvious reasons, you rush in and he's just got good AoE damage, throw people around. Uh, Brig doesn't really fit in again. It's just kind of tough, because then you have to give up one of these two, and these two are way more important. Uh, Doom guy, so Doomfist, he could definitely work here, because he can disrupt and throw them around and stuff. And then May, she's kind of in a bad spot right now, but you're not going to lose no matter what. She's going to do better in a rush comp than a poke comp because she's basically a pyro from TF2 nowadays because of the changes, the rework, but there's better picks, but I don't think you'd lose no matter what because you have a May. Uh, same thing for Var, she's, she's like, it's going to be map dependent stuff. She doesn't fit super well in the rush comp, but she can work in the rush comp. It'd be fine. I would, you definitely are not going to lose because you have a Far. It just depends on the map and if the Far is good or not. And other than that, these characters are just in weird spots for this. Maybe you get away with the Sim in this. Maybe if the Sim is good and knows what they're doing, you could get by with it. But I'm going to leave it out because it's rare to have a good Sim. Uh, and yeah. But again, don't take it as these can't be played. Uh, I've had Bastions on my team and won the game with literally not playing any of these comps before. You know, it's ladder play. So if you have a Bastion or a Brig or a Widow or whatever and, and everyone else is playing Rush... You don't need to flame them. You'll probably have a decent chance of winning anyway on the ladder. So keep that in mind again. All right. Well, I saved the wackiest one for last, but you actually do see this in the ladder at the higher end, especially. And 
it's less common than the other two. I would say 60, I'd say 75% of the time I see one of the other two comps, maybe 80% of the time. And then I see this comp about, you know, one out of five games or so, maybe one out of six games. And it's what I call the surround harass comp. And the normal meta comp for this is something along the lines of a Brig with a Zen as the healers. As this is, it's all built around this, which is really crazy for some players to think about to not have a main heal. But uh, it works because of the other characters that we tend to pick. So Genji, he is just OP right now, and he doesn't need a ton of healing. The Zen Orb is enough for him, or an occasional pack is good enough for him. And the main thing about this is playing characters who go around the sides and are just on the edges of the map and not directly confronting them. The main goal of this comp is to not directly confront the enemy. It's to kind of be all over the place, surround them, harass them, and just be a nuisance everywhere and just pick people off and then go in for the kill and execute once they've lost one or two people from harassment and surrounding and just catching them off guard and surprising them. Uh, the other good one for this right now would probably be Sombra, although in ladder it's, you know, Sombra struggled to perform in the setting, but at the highest end, this would probably be Sombra, especially in like an Overwatch League setting, it'd be Sombra because she can just skip anywhere she wants without having to worry about getting caught along the way. And then she can EMP right when you engage, or she can, you know, hack someone and then Genji dives them and kills them and Genji dashes out and things like she can work well with the Genji. But again, there's tons of alternate picks. This is not like a guaranteed everyone. It's not like back in the day with goats, if you know what I'm talking about, where there was a guaranteed exact setup every game. Uh, this one is going to vary a lot based on the players you have, especially on ladder. Remember, this is for ladder that I'm making this. It's going to vary based on the players you have, the maps you're on, things like that. Now, the normal tank you would run with this most commonly would be D.Va, because with her booster, she can kind of just be anywhere. D DM gives a little bit of defensive capability to keep your Zen and Brig alive, since they're kind of the vulnerability in all this. And she can also back up your uh, aggressors when they go in. So she's a good all-arounder, because the weakness of this comp is going to be on the Brig and the Zen, where they usually work together. The Zen is the bait, and they think they, that Zen's going to be the one they can kill. And then Brig can kind of protect the Zen by knocking them back and shielding. And then that gives Zen enough time and space to be able to kill them with his Discord and his left click. Because Zen's terrifying with damage. So, But they are still kind of the weak point in this. If Rush Comp is what kind of counters this a little bit because it runs them over. But at the same time, you rush in and then these two pick off your healers. And then suddenly it's a fair fight. So it's a viable comp. And there's a lot of dynamics to it. It depends on the map and the characters. All right, so let's get into some of the alternate picks. Hammond is probably the best alternate pick to D.Va in this comp because his shields make it so he needs less healing. One of the main problems with this comp is you need characters who don't need healing, which is ironic because Genji's known for spamming I need healing. Because the th problem is that you don't, it's not that you don't have any healing, it's that you have very limited healing. Zen heals 30 HP per second. Brig used to heal effectively 30 HP per second with armor packs, but now I don't know what it is. Uh, but it's still something along those lines when she even has them. Uh, so it's just you have healing, but there's not enough to go around. So you gotta you gotta savor that healing. So that's kind of why you do that. And, and Hammond can just go grab health packs. Uh, Diva, on the other hand, can kind of use defense matrix and be careful and not need a ton of healing. And also she can remech if she has her alt. So it's like she has extra HP. Anyone who basically has extra HP. That's why Roadhog's also good in this because he has his vape. I forget the name of it, but. Uh, he can self-heal, and that also gives him damage mitigation when he does it and stuff. So he doesn't necessarily need your healing at all times. And if he plays it right, and is and he f does good at going on the sidelines, hooking someone, killing them, and then disappearing off into the mist. That's kind of what he does. Uh, and then Winston is good because he has enough mobility to go grab some health packs and stuff. But also, he can just not really do anything and then just dive in at the right time to back these people up. But he's not going to be as good as the other two tanks. Uh, but he's still decent in this because he can just not be in and then jump in and shield and then get out. And then just slowly wait for your healers to heal him up, which takes a little bit. But then go for the next engage in another 5-10 seconds. Go again, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So, he's a decent pick. Sojourn, uh, just because, she again, she's S tier OP. So, she fits into literally anything because of the one-tap headshots. It's really, if they want to pick Sojourn, they just need to give massive fall off on the railgun. So, it only one-shots close range. Or else, she's just always going to be S tier. It's just... One shots are just insane, and basically, it's just, when you play Soldier and you're playing Valorant, not Overwatch, it's, it's kind of crazy. So, uh, she's good, even though she's doesn't have sustain or anything, just because she's strong. Soldier, uh, he has self sustain, 
So he doesn't need your healing as bad as some of the other characters. And he's in a good spot where he's a good character right now in a lot of comps. So he'll just, you know, he'll find a way to fit in. He's good at, you know, sprinting over to the side, shooting people. They shoot him. He throws down a heal station. He takes care of himself. And he's able to flank and work like some of these other characters. And then we have Tracer, which is an obvious one. She can get wherever she needs to be. She doesn't need a lot of healing. She can quickly get to health packs. So she doesn't really need your healing. So she fits in really well into this comp. Uh, Kiriko might replace the Brig in this eventually. I, I don't really know. She's Again, she's just probably going to be OP. So probably be able to fit her in somehow into something. Um, also, I want to point out, I didn't say this earlier. Zen discords. The reason we have, one of the reasons we have Zen in this is he discords when the other characters dive onto someone suddenly. If he has Sightline, he's going to discord them. And the Tracer goes on them and the Winston jumps on them and then they get out. You know, or whatever. And they got one kill. got two kills or whatever. His discords to help. You know, make it happen suddenly. You just suddenly assassinate someone. You know, I mean, you could call this assassination comp as well. Anyway, uh, Moira, she is one of the best alternate picks for this as well because she can keep your Zen alive. She's hard to kill. If Zen dies, she can just go off into the fog and appear in the middle of nowhere and just be harassing people. She plays the same, she can play the same way as these other characters with this whole assassination idea because Fade is so good for that. And she's in a really strong spot. She can take care of herself. Uh, she can go into a room and look straight up at her heal orb and just sustain in there while fighting people and stuff. So you can make it work. If you have a Morda when everyone else is running this stuff, uh, you're totally fine. You can absolutely win, even though suddenly you do have healing. And having her changes some of the other picks of what suddenly is viable in this. And then you start getting into weird off meta comps, you know, once you have her, if you do swap the other things. But either way, if you ran just the straight meta and just swapped her with the Brig, it's like, and ran everything else, you know, run it back the same, uh, she'd be fine. You, you can win. Uh, Echo can definitely fit into this. Uh, she doesn't need a ton of healing. She can, has enough mobility to go get health packs. She can get wherever she wants to be to surround them and harass them and assassinate people. And then her alt is also just a nice thing in this setting to just be able to, I don't know, very tactical, pick what you need to do and do it at the right time. Uh, Farah can fit in. A Zen Orb sometimes is good enough for her. The Farah has got to play a little a little scared. It depends on the map. Again, Far always depends on the map. But she can kind of uh, be up on a building off to the side and just like peeking over the top and shoot, like poking at them. And then right when people go in for the assassination, she uses her Concussion Blast, Concussion Blast, whatever it is, and just suddenly is right over top of their heads and just shooting them point blank and then kills someone and then barrages and surprise assassination. So she can definitely work. Uh, Doom Guy, Doom Fist, uh, he actually is okay here. Uh, he has his shield now. He can uh, get around the map. He's a lot of mobility. He can go get health packs and stuff. Uh, if you have a Doom guy, he'll survive. He can uh, do it. He can perform if he's actually good here. So, yeah, you can win. Uh, Lucio, he's he's a fine alternate pick. You could replace the Brig. Or if you needed to, you could replace the Zen. You'd hate to replace the Zen. But Lucio can also be an assassin. If the, only if the Lucio is good, though. He's got to you know, be jumping around the sides up here, just selling someone's head. He boops them. Genji dashes on them. They're displaced. They don't know what they're going on. They're dead. You know, like he can, he, Lucio can play as an assassin. So if they're able to play that way, then you could swap him out. But he also has healing, and he has sound barrier and all these things. You know, he's viable. He's fine in, in a setting like this. And then we have Anna again. Anna's so strong, you could just go Anna's end for this and try to make it work. Uh, and you'd probably be fine. You'd probably be totally fine. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. She's just strong, so you can make it work. Uh, Bap, you could probably replace the Brig if you needed to, but the catch to that then is uh, your vulnerability in the back line is extra vulnerable, but he makes up for that by having immortality field, so him and Zen can kind of immortality field together and hopefully kill someone before they kill the immortality field. Uh, and then he can use his alt, and then Zen can just annihilate someone to suddenly when they're being harassed from a, you know, when Genji is on them and they're distracted, he suddenly windows, and then him and Zen just kill them when they're not, don't realize they're being shot at. Uh, but he's just not, like, the greatest in this scenario, but you absolutely can win. You can absolutely win with him. He's totally fine. Then we have to viable alternate picks. So, like, Sigma, he really needs healing, but his shield is enough to kind of keep him alive. But he doesn't really have the ability to surround them. It's just that he's strong and viable, so it's it's whatever. You can you you won't lose because you have Sigma if you swap the Devo with the Sigma in this setting and have everything else the same. Uh, it's just there's better picks, but it's definitely viable. Like you you aren't going to lose your game automatically. Uh, Zarya, same kind of thing. Uh, she has bubbles and things, but she does need healing. She d needs some healing for sure. She can't has no mobility, so she can't just like surround. Uh, but you're not going to lose no matter what. Ryan. 
He has mobility, he could surround, but he's just so big and noisy and obnoxious that he's not going to assassinate anybody, basically. Although every now and then, I'm sure you guys have had it, ha had it happen where you're on the payload fighting and just suddenly you got earth shattered from behind and you go, how do you get there, bro? What the hell? Like, so, I mean, it can happen, but he's just not, it's not, you know, routine. Uh, Arissa, she's just strong, but she needs tons of healing. And it's not really going to work, but you're not going to lose. You're definitely not going to lose. It's viable, but it's not best. You know what I mean? Uh, Junkrat, he is viable because he can get, he can actually assassinate and get around and do stuff. This is the one scenario where he's maybe uh, actually in this tier. But just think of him as being between, but I'll put him below because he's just so inconsistent. And he's just so easy. Like, if you catch him without one of his mines, he's just dead. Like, he just cannot do anything, basically. Unless he's inside of a box. If he gets caught out in the open while moving from one place to the next, he's just dead. Like, there's a few catches with him. And map dependency a little bit with him. So, keep that in mind with him. But he's def you're def definitely not going to lose because of a junk rat in this comp of all comps. Like, he'll be fine uh, if he knows what he's doing. Uh, Widow, map dependent viable. If you have long sight lines, you can replace one of your assassins with uh, Widow. And then she can try to... Uh, pick them off when they're busy with the person trying to assassinate them. Again, I think Junker Town first point. Uh, I can't remember the other long sightline maps, but any long sightline map, uh, she can try to pick them off while they're distracted by everyone else. Uh, but it's not th a great scenario. And on some maps, it's just straight up not viable at all, so keep that in mind. But in, in uh, some scenarios, and if the Widow's good, it's viable. It's, it's, it's okay. Uh, Hanzo, he... Doesn't really have a whole lot of mobility, uh, and it's mainly just all built off storm arrows in this comp, is the fact that he can storm arrow someone, and again, he can pick them off randomly with a one tap out of nowhere uh, when they're distracted. And then Cassidy, uh, not enough mobility, but he can assassinate by just appearing out of nowhere with high noon, or coming from the side, whatever. He has consistent damage, he's okay. You're not going to lose because of him, but he, there's, there's better picks for this comp in particular. Now, this comp is one of the few scenarios where Sim is actually viable. She's not the best, but she's viable because of TP. She can just suddenly TP on someone right when the Genji's diving in or something. There's actually this trick she can do where she throws three turrets on the ground and then puts a teleporter on them and the other end right next to someone. And then just suddenly three turrets appear next to someone and she tries to beam them down, kill them, and then teleport back. So she's basically, she can play as an assassin if she's good. And her other things like having the wall and stuff are nice. Uh, there's better picks, but she you're not going to lose because of Sim in this comp. She actually is not the absolute worst in this comp at all. Uh, a Reaper guy can obviously assassinate. Uh, he might actually be in best alternate picks. Come to think. I'm going to put him in best uh, alternate picks because he can just appear out of nowhere and try to tap someone down with shotguns and then fade out if he's in trouble. He can use his teleport to just you know navigate the map without being noticed and they don't realize he's coming up beside him and stuff. So he can assassinate, and then Death Blossom, he does the thing where he just falls out of the sky somewhere with a Death Blossom and kills three guys, so uh, he is actually a best alternate pick. And then Ash is viable. Uh, you know, it doesn't really fit in this comp, but it's not going to lose you the game. And Bob's nice, and, it, you know, the dynamite helps when the Genji dashes in and things. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll survive. You're not going to lose no matter what. And then Mei is actually kind of viable in this comp. Uh... Mainly, she, the wall can disrupt people and just cause chaos. Uh, I don't know. Blizzard's okay. She can poke. She may, but the biggest reason she's viable at all here is she has self-sustain. If you don't know, when she ice blocks, she regens her HP in ice block. So that lets her just sustain uh, even without any healing. And that's enough to keep her alive. And then the wall can save her and keep her alive too. She can lock herself inside of a room. Wait for Ice Block, cool down, then Ice Block. At that point, the enemy's been standing there for 10 seconds. If the rest of your team hasn't done anything, then that's a them problem kind of scenario. And then these other people, ah, uh, man, they don't really fit in this comp at all. Passion does not fit in this comp now that he does not have self-heal. Uh, Junker Queen just needs too much healing in order to get value, so she's not going to fit. Uh, Mercy just doesn't really fit because Mercy fits best when there's people to consistently heal. Like, if you're going to go with Mercy, you're going to want to do it in one of these other comps instead uh but she's just kind of in a weird spot where she's not super great right now uh but you're not going to lose because of any of these no matter what it's just going to be a tougher game and again and torb he just i don't know he's a little too vulnerable uh and he doesn't really bring enough to this type of gameplay for the, this comp so uh yeah that is the um surround harass comp and that 
is it. That's like the three main metas that people are playing diamond through top 500 and even an overwatch league and again overwatch league comps are a little bit different than ladder because expected coordination is something they have that you don't have on ladder uh and, and again if you're in gold diamond or apparently bronze because of the bronze bug right now um you can swap out a lot of this with anything you want it's not a big deal uh these are more of just guidelines of what is the most standard thing that you see that is almost guaranteed to get the most value at a high level and then things that you could swap out and still have a pretty good chance of winning the game. And then things that are like, you're not going to lose, but it's it's not the best, but you're definitely not going to lose. Is you know So again, poke comp. You can take one last look at that. That's the poke comp. That's the rush comp. And this is the surround harass comp. So that's it, guys. That's It's the 8th of October, 2022. This will definitely change as patches come in in the next weeks and months. So... Uh, be sure to subscribe for more. I'm going to revisit these things at a later date when things change, if the popularity of the game stays like it is. And I'll keep you guys in the loop. But yeah, so these are the three main meta comps that I see at high level, that I see at high level streams. I see in Overwatch League and stuff. And again, this may not be absolutely perfect, and there's going to be things you disagree with, and that's totally okay. Um, but these are just guidelines. Generally speaking, most things that you can expect generally where things are going to be and you can kind of build off of that but don't take these as absolute don't see these and then go in your game and go oh we got a bastion we lose no matter what and just troll or something like you can still win with even the ones i didn't show and i may even be wrong to some degree on some of these like in this zen's good you could probably just make him work right like zen, zen's just a good character right now but uh, he doesn't really fit in that comp but you, you're not gonna lose right but anyway uh, that's it that's the meta comps right now in overwatch 2 after launch this is like launch patch Hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully now you have a better idea of what to play or what to expect in comp and what would be good or what to do in your five stacks in Overwatch 2.